Good morning. Hello. We'll give it five minutes before we get the working group started as uh, let people join. All right. Hi, I got Hey, Gregory. Hey, Nikolai. Oh, cool. Give it a few minutes for folks to join. Usually start at five after. I drop the meeting notes in the Zoom chat. You can add your name, and if you got a topic specifically you'd like to go over, add it there. Greetings, uh, Victor and Lucina. We'll get started here in a couple of minutes. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Hello. We'll get started um, in about one minute, five after. Meeting notes are in the Zoom chat. You can add your name and any topic you'd like to discuss today.
Hmm. All right. Okay, uh, so this is the CNF Working Group. Um, this call is being recorded and the recordings are currently uploaded to CNCF's uh, YouTube playlist for this working group. And the name of the group may change and locations for recordings and stuff in the future uh, as we're in the process of um, merging things with LFN and creating the new program for the Cloud Native Telecom Initiative. But in the meantime, uh, we'll continue to meet here until we've decided on any new change. Is there anyone not familiar with this group? What we've been doing in general? Are you new to either of the programs? All right, well, let's just get started. I'm going to share my screen. Let's see, we got Gerge and Nikolai. Let's just drop everybody on. All right, um, some couple announcements for upcoming events. Could be of interest for all of us. The uh, Cloud Native uh, KubeCon days in Guadalajara is coming up. Uh, and in February, CFPs are currently open. I think the next um, well, that'll be the next one, I think, North America. There's another one that'll be happening in maybe Central U.S. after that. <clears throat> the KubeCon Cloud NativeCon EU, we currently don't have a co-located event. We've had four Cloud Native Telco days in the past trying to see if that one if we're going to have something like that it seems like there's an interest for it but it hadn't materialized yet if you do want to see something like that um, then please reach out to lfn and the lf event team and express your interest so that they're hearing it and that there's a demand and we'll try to work something out. And um, beyond that's one summit. The CFPs were going to close on Friday, but they've been extended to December 17th. So if you haven't got one in but did want to, then now's the time. Sorry, two questions about the uh, alternative day. Um, will you? Uh, stand a notification to the fan, or like, do you expect that everybody separately to do that for the? Are are you referring to the cloud native telco day? Yes, I I think it's a better idea, Gergay. The more voices they hear, I mean, it. You know, if there's some specific thing that we you think we can do to organize. You know, I, I'm like signing off on something. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fine. Please put that forward. But for now, it's as many um, organizations and individuals that are requesting mm -hmm. that we do it. I think it's going to help. Uh, beyond that, um, anyone that's willing to sponsor an event like that, then I think that helps, um, you know, get people in courage that are making those decisions to have it i i know that 
at least um, a few companies were looking at sponsoring the EU event because they were EU companies. So, mm -hmm. okay, thanks. And about the One Summit CFP extension, where where was this communicated? I didn't get any mail or anything about it. Um, I think I heard from Rani at mm. last week, but did, did the web, uh, it looks like uh, Lucina just typed in the website was updated, so it looks like it's finally updated. I, I don't know if any... <clears throat> any type of message or announcement went out probably be good to drop it on the lf uh, tech slack and other places okay maybe i missed it it wasn't in any of them okay channels but anyways, that's yeah, it, that it wasn't that. it wasn't updated on the website um, early in the Friday, so I I didn't even know that it had you know, I, I think we're still waiting on it to get updated. So yeah, I'm not sure if they actually send out any communication, but if you're not in the right place, you'd never saw it. But anyways. There's more time. All right. Um, I'll jump into the PRs. If someone has a topic they want to go over, then please add it. Um, I guess the one thing I, I'd like to do is the maybe go over the list of tools and challenges that we're looking at for the this program, the new program that we're creating. Um, there's two wiki pages, so. Does anyone have anything else they'd like to add? You can either write it in or verbalize it. All right. I'll pull up the PR review and then we'll get to some of those topics. <clears throat> So right now, we only have two things. They're both related to this uh, white paper. And this newest one, um, Ildico, and I don't remember if, Nikolai, if this had anything that you had on it. Uh, it seems like there's a, a few different items. But this was trying to address some final pieces in the, the white paper. And... Actually, I, I need to check something real quick. I tried to merge December 2nd. Why is that so old? Oh, that was the problem. Okay, this is a simple change. Linus, 
Foundation to Linux Foundation networking, which I think is what we have in the in the newest version of this request. <clears throat> Yep, it's there. All right. So the ask on this, um, is there anyone not familiar with this white paper? I'll give you a quick overview before I do this one tidbit. I am not completely familiar with it. I really right. some pieces. But is it still in a branch, right? Yes. It's still on a branch. All right. So the the gist of it is it's a follow-up to <clears throat> GMN's Cloud Native Manifesto, which was published um, a couple of months ago now. And this is a follow-up trying to get more specific on the ask from CSPs. <clears throat> and some of the other than maybe particulars on removing amb ambiguity or spelling or just trying to do some things like that. Some of the more explicit things that were added were a mutual effort between CSPs and vendors to take on the responsibility of the change. Um, one of the things pointed out by several people was what happens if people creating CNFs, platforms, that sort of thing, or, or, or I'll say integration pieces for platforms. They're trying to make the change to have native components, but CSPs don't change their model for deployment, their operations management, or their internal environments to actually match those things. And then um, they're held, then the creators of CNFs are held accountable for things not working, then that would be a problem. So that was one of the major changes. Uh, it was already um, understood by the CSPs that were involved, but it wasn't explicit. So the wording for that's been put through several places, including the introduction and um, some other stuff around like business models and other things to communicate that this is, the intent is to be mutually beneficial while moving towards this different model of um, running the networks. Um, and then the latest change, which I was showing, <clears throat> this one was about adding pretty straightforward. This white paper and what it's asking is, is talking about Kubernetes. So not saying that there's other environments that may be used, but um, this paper isn't trying to cover all things. It's the the focus here is uh, Kubernetes based environments. Is it is it further defined like which flavor of Kubernetes are we talking about? Like every every distro is different. They are using different runtimes, different CNIs, different storage. So the the you'll have to go through the the individual pieces on the requirements that break out architecture and other pieces. But the 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 main focus is on being the vendor neutral interoperability between platforms and multi, trying to support multi cloud, which means uh, one of the things I think you've seen in the past, Gergay is. If there's a requirement for specific SLAs that are end up being tied into performance aspects of a 
specific flavor or distribution. And then you're trying to also do multi-cloud and that can be problematic. And that's partly where the mutual effort to support each other. Um, CSP is trying to meet part way to adjust those SLAs or anything else. So the very first thing would be vendor neutral on the distribution. So first starting there and There's but there other is no, vendor neutral, that's my problem here. Like, there is no vendor neutral Kubernetes. Yeah. Because, all, because, you know, Kubernetes in itself cannot even start a container. You have to have a container runtime. You have to have a CNI plugin. And all of these are making the, like, the end result vendor specific. It's not, it's a dream to have vendor neutral Kubernetes. So you can have a goal and you try to meet it as close as you can and then you have the exceptions. So yes, you can you can say it's a dream, but that doesn't mean that you can't aim for it. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna I so I, I just merged that one pull request from Philippe from Orange. Um that was related to the request from Ildico and a few other folks. So we have, at this point, like there's enough um, approvals from everyone that we're gonna move forward on this, but I'm, I'm trying to check to see if there's what's left as far as resolved or unresolved. All right, I'm going to close this one out. This is about terms, cloud infrastructure, and other things, but this paper is about the idea of the operation, the the practices used, this, the technology, how it's, how you build your environment with the technology and ideally how the technology responds in that environment, that it's following cloud native principles. So we're, what we're really saying is it's designed to run in these environments and it behaves with the expectations their environment. But when we say native, that's what that's about. Um, so this is just terminology and we're uh, not David, changing it to be more generic. Go ahead. No, do you think that we need to... Uh clarify that in the document in the document or like what we have is enough to what what you are really explaining. I think um, right. I, I feel like it's been said over and over. It's mm -hmm. uh, kind of frustrating to have to say when you say native, you don't actually mean native to that environment you mean something else. Cloud native doesn't mean cloud computing. You can do cloud computing, but not try to design something to be native to the cloud, but you can still have technology that you would just say it's cloud computing. Um, so as far as like adding it to this, I mean, we could, it could be put somewhere. Probably it should be like a, there's a whole section that's a, a reference a and append and the appendix. I'm trying to get down there. There's looks like there's a, some other th annex. So this annex would probably be if we want it like inserted rather than a reference to something external, then I would put it in the annex. Like this 12 factors for CNS. Um and tell us to put a lot of this part in here um, and then other people added to this. But so this section goes into more details on related to 12 factor apps, <clears throat> but trying to relate it to CNS. And this didn't feel central to what the 
white paper was trying to communicate. So that's why it's an annex. So I, I think if we're going to put in like, what do we mean when we say cloud native, it should be an annex. The no, no, cl cloud native infrastructure, I guess that was the, the term which was referring to Idico. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. That's not that way. Let's see. Was it here? Where was that? Here? Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <sighs> so here we go, this part. So this is, you know, kind of what Gerge was saying as far as um, there's different distributions or opinionated infrastructure from different vendors. And then what does that mean? So now there's a problem with adoption. CSPs are wanting a unified cloud native infrastructure. So what they're saying is they're wanting that dream that Gerge is saying is not not here or harder to reach if i make it lighter <clears throat> um, you know the point of silva and stuff is to try to get closer yeah because from from my perspective cloud native means the workload that you run on the cloud computing infrastructure um so so for maybe yeah just like additional native there probably yeah I, i'm could be a little bit agree with the Lico is not yeah cloud native more refers more to the workload on top of the interesting infrastructure. yeah i i agree with this differentiation that cloud native is more about the workload and if we are talking about cloud native infrastructure then we might have such a thing but that is implementing a cloud infrastructure using the cloud native principles. That's literally what. Um, That's what. Yes, exactly. Philippe, I agree with that comment. Philippe and Vuk are talking about implementing the infrastructure. Well, really, what they want is the entire environment to be designed. So the entire stack, which I think we keep getting away from, and trying to think there is a platform and there are applications but then every time we get into that we start getting down is this application that has an operator and oh it actually has a you know some type of management piece that talks directly with cni is that still a cnf because it's running in the same space that kubelet's running so now oh it's an extension so we're talking the full stack if we don't try to split them and the ask here is let's build the whole environment. So if we take Deutsche Telekom as an example, they're doing deployments of their Kubernetes on onto their you know bare metal area with GitOps practices. And then they're having applications use similar practices, which could be like you could use something like Nefaya. And now you have the workload. So the deployment of the workload and then the actual workload that's running following native to the cloud computing principles. So they're wanting the whole thing. So it sounds like in from what y'all are saying and then maybe what Ildico is saying is this is not communicating that. Philippe was trying to say that here. And I think yeah, Jeffrey Salins understood, Vuk um, understood what he's saying, but if y'all are not understanding it, then maybe the wording needs to be changed. To communicate that we're saying we want the entire environment to be designed to be native for cloud computing or native to the whole concept of cloud computing. So when you say cloud native, that's what we mean. Everything is designed for <clears throat> when when they're saying it, they're applying it to everything. Yeah. Um 
yeah for me oh for me. here's what we're missing on the next line see this i have a unified cloud native infrastructure layer which are free to choose okay so this is they get into more and more layers and stuff but i guess maybe this goes back to the comment earlier that maybe we need the definitions and terms what what are we saying there no no no. i mean uh, for me it's like uh, i mean based on the history the first thing that was came uh was the cloud computing infrastructure right i mean mm -hmm. we designed the cloud and eventually we started like modifying the, RP the applications to adopt and and, and use all the cloud native um, or, or the cloud <clears throat> computing benefits so that's why we deliver the new term like cloud native because those new applications were designed for that new thing like the, the cloud computing so like like using that term is like like going back to the, the origins like the same cloud native infrastructure means like it's essentially the same like same cloud computing i mean from my perspective because it, it is it, it was the, the the first thing which triggers the, the revolution of the change in the application so so that that's why for me i guess a little more agree with Ildiko. i mean when you're saying in cloud infrastructure like uh, it doesn't change anything like that because uh, we have the traditional infrastructure, which is, you know, uh, we, it is not self-service, it is not uh, ubiquitous, it's not API-driven, all these benefits that the cloud has. So so the infrastructure, when, when the infrastructure evolved from the traditional infrastructure to adopting the cloud technologies, um, yeah, we have to redesign the applications and we have to start adopting them. That, that's why we create like the, the cloud native uh, principles or like the guidelines where we try to reflect, okay, well, you have to modify your application to use all these things. Um, I mean, it, the, the terms, I mean, if I read it, that's what I can read. Uh, I can understand that he's referring to the same thing, but for me, it's like a kind of uh, redundant probably. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't hurt to keep it as it is, uh, as, as the original is, like by using cloud native infrastructure. Uh, but uh, but usually I prefer to refer cloud computing to the infrastructure and cloud native to the workload. That's my probably my my own personal way to distinguish things. What does it mean this the unified part of this definition? Because I think there is a contradiction here. So usually CNF vendors are validating their CNFs against the infrastructures where we have to run. So we are not validating against random stuff. We are validating against infrastructures what our customers do have. So in this sense, it's not really true that their unified cloud native infrastructure layer is different from where we are validating by for CNFs. Hmm. So I don't see that, I think this sentence is not getting the problem right. It looks like, from this sentence, it looks like that CNF vendors are validating against random stuff, which is not true. And yes, we are, that's, that's true. We are validating to a number of open-ended infrastructure flavors because our customers are using Operated infrastructure flavors. Yeah. And we are validating against what our customers require from us. Yeah. So, Gerge, that's the, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to modify this based on reading a single small context. What you just talked mm -hmm. about is related to another portion that was added 
in the last two weeks addressing asking a vendor to make a change when the CSPs if they don't change, then you're going to fail as a vendor. Like you're not going to be able to match what they actually have in reality. So that other change was that CSPs are committed to meet on like for this one would be if, if we're saying a unified cloud native infrastructure, well, that's not up to you if you're building a CNF and they're not, they're running an opinionated infrastructure and they're saying we run on you know three different three different um posted environments or two plus our own internal and they're all opinionated but we we want you to run on some unified upstream vanilla version and then you you won't that's, work. That, that's, no vanilla won't work. Version. that's the i think that's the misunderstanding it's not possible yeah. to have a vanilla version there is no right. such a thing. There are only open edited versions. There are only open edited versions. It that every opening is different. That is true, but is there is no such a thing as a vanilla Kubernetes distro. Maybe, maybe this this paragraph refers to like the usage of uh, cloud formation, key templates, and all these technologies. And maybe that's agree. Like I mean, if if you have like if you are using those technologies. Like cloud formation and heat and place and all these things is not it's just still using the cloud technologies but it's not unified like uh and we need like something that's why we that that's the major success of kubernetes right because we use it as a standard like a way to define it uh like like a unified <laughs> standard to define things if that is the case i guess that's that's right like we need one unified cloud uh Template technology could be, but, but there is no such a thing. I think. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but that's the, I think that's the trick here is that all of this is driven by the operators. So we are not doing this because we, you know, we, we have too much time to do this or too much money to spend on this. It is driven by operator requests. So if they would require something else from us, then we would do something else. Yeah. And the key, key is that they all build their operated stacks. That's why we are validating against a number of operated stacks because this is what our customers are using. So Gerge, one I think one of the presumptions where you're starting is from where things have been versus where they want to go. So the ask is not, hey, please go back and fix all your stuff the way we're saying now on current, like as of today, or even six months ago the way you're talking about it is what was in the past deutsche telecom just launched their production network a a large portion of their production network not all of it but a very large portion of their production network on this the chef um get ops yeah 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 that's i don't know what it is it's an opinionated Kubernetes right. distro but, if but like to this, if that's like brand to new. Deploy. That's the Gerge, The point is, it's it's brand new. So you wouldn't be expected to say, "Why haven't you done this yet?" The mm -hmm. ask in this whole white paper is, "Let's keep moving forward to that." So it's not going to be. It's defined, and now instantly they're running production is all implementing something that's the vendor neutral everything what's going to happen is whenever multiple csps are all saying hey we also are going to follow these steps so that you have more of a unified environment to point at and then you come in as a vendor and go um actually this is different from this one and this 
And now they have to figure that out. But at least the commitment that I'm hearing from them is they want to try to converge more and more toward you would say, oh, it's closer. These five are very close. There's three other CSPs that are out there that they're not there yet. And their flavors are very different. You you can say that they're all different, but it doesn't, that's that's a big difference from saying how much are they different? If we can get them to where they're 95% the same at some level, and that covers a large number of CNFs to where you could say 99% of the CNFs will run on any of them, but we have to do these adjustments per operator. That's a big difference between saying, you know, 10% of the CNF has to be configured very differently with different requirements or higher. They're trying to reduce the, the changes required yeah i think that's a very good very good direction and i fully support that now how do we find these common denominators that's a big question <laughs> yeah well this is the start so the other one was they just the ngmn was very high level this is the next <clears throat> level so you should look through this if you haven't yet for the the challenges specifically, forget about, we got stuck in the terminology on the very first part, introduction and pre-validation. But the other parts of the challenges are them trying to say, here's what we're, we're dealing with operationally right now. And then the ask here is what they have, have been saying. So Sil uh, Silva is based on the experimental cloud computing so silver uh, project it's but it's based on an experimental cloud platform that orange has been working on for years they have production recently starting to run on similar aspects of silva but silva's not as far as i know you may know gergay but as far as i know there's nobody out there actually running something that's there's no actual certification or compliance program yet for Silva. I know it's in the works, but I don't think anyone's actually running anything based on the alpha or the in-progress work there. But I know they that- have, uh, They have a validation program and they ask CNF vendors to validate against. Yeah, but is there anyone actually them. running a production other than I can say Orange is running in production pieces of what Silva is, but I don't think they're running like a fully compliant here is Silva. I think they do, at least Orange is doing that. At least that's my, I, my impression I, from what's happening. But maybe we have sure somebody in production. I'm not sure it's in production, but uh, <clears throat> like somebody already mentioned, they have multiple environments already set up. I think Telefonica has one orange has one i think orange is building a second i think tim is building one but there are two two platform environments stood up one from telefonica one from orange that is being used for cnf validation now whether whether they've taken those and moved them as into production i don't i don't have the answer to that but they do have silva environment stood up for doing that cnf validation Right. So that would be closer to production on that. So th this just goes back to the the same thing, that there's a move towards it. And the request here isn't that everyone is compliant to everything that's outlined here as of today. It's let's start trying to move towards implementing this stuff and talk about anything that's a problem. So this would be if there's something missing. So Philippe and other folks from Orange were a big part of this. And if there's something that's in conflict with what's being asked here and what's in Silva, then that needs to be pointed out. Um, Vuk and other folks from Deutsche Telekom were part of this. And they're trying to make sure that 
the platform, when they're talking GitOps patterns and stuff, from what I've seen, those would be compatible with someone that's using something like Nefio and you're using KPT packaging and the configuration that you do in Git is going to be very similar to someone using Flux or Argo CD. Uh, Orange is using, I think, Argo Workflow with something else. But they're so they're using different software for how you're going to implement those different practices and patterns. But if you're developing your deployments and your operational management to use those sorts of practices, it doesn't mean you're going to be done if there's some specific thing for a tool, but you're going to be a lot closer to working with all of them than if you don't support anything for like deployment from from git if you if your package can't be configured if your cnf can't be configured and deployed from git then you're not going to work for nefio or you know flex or any of these things so the the first goal in this is to get to that base level and that gets you that reduces the efforts to then move between the opinionated versions, Gergay, that you keep talking about. Mm -hmm. And then the idea is if, if we can get everyone closer to that, that vendor neutral, and then we come back and, you know, ideally as a creator, you can say, Hey, here's, here's three different flavors that we see often and from different operators are all using these, but they're doing something in a different way. Then we can start looking and going, well, then how do we make it easier? Maybe influencing all of the, the, the specific distributions, but also looking at, you know, stuff like the different layers that can help with um, going across those. That was also outlined above. So, um, just like if they are the different, how, what's the typical procedure to get a consensus agreement on making a more uh, uniform API standard? But a uniform API between the distributions? Is, is your I think it's not necessarily APIs, what we are talking about here, but more mm, like runtime capabilities or something. I think that's the key because APIs are kind of easy. Kind of what? Kind of easy. Yeah, well, ideally, the so APIs are just a way to interact with the system and um utilize the capabilities in the system. So the I think the APIs are an important part of this. It may not be that the AP, an API specifically is the way that you're interacting. Um, on the other hand, it's how are you defining APIs? And so when we're talking about declarative configuration and a declarative system, sorry, a declarative system from the cloud native perspective, you're talking about declarative configuration. You're talking about declarative APIs. There's a lot of pieces where you can have that. So I, I think the capabilities um, and attributes in the system, you can, you can say, how are you going to make them available to different components, whether you're extending the quote unquote platform or you're having a a CNF that's closer to the platform that needs to utilize something, then it may be almost an extension. And then you have, you know, other parts where it's maybe a higher level workload, but there's there's places you're going to interact. So 
when you say API, you could be a little bit generic. But whatever the case, I think you could say they should be declarative. So whenever the system that you're on is saying it has capabilities, it needs to be able to, to announce, here's what I have. And then the application should be able to say to the system, here's what I want. What do you have? Here's, here's the needs, you could say, but it's really starting with, here's what I want. And then the system ideally is going to respond. Yeah, I, I did use that as a more generic term. So um, just to, just imagine that the, the just different organization already have their own uh, opinionated implementation. So, but going forward, what's the process to make them like take one component to one stack and stick it into another set stack and it's still going to work? Uh, the one I've been using is like own app orchestration or uh, any of the um, the full, full stack. Like, how do we how do they work together? And and if there is a like if they don't currently work together, what's the procedure to uh, to have an agreement? I guess that's the question. Um. So probably the first thing to note and acknowledge is how native are you going with your entire environment and the entire stack? And there may be parts that work within a system, but you they're not cloud native. And that's okay. It's just what you've decided on. So if there's a, a greater benefit to not having something native to the Kubernetes environment, I'm just going to be specific to Kubernetes. If it's better, higher value for you to not be native, then by all means, don't be native. That's we're we're not saying be cloud native no matter what. This is for real world. So that's the very first thing to note. And then after that, you can decide with whatever component you're bringing in. And makes, sorry, go ahead. That that should bring the next question I have. So um, you just mentioned that not everything is cloud native because a lot of the the current stack is written uh, based on uh, OpenStack, for example, right? So, but now um, cloud native by cloud native typically means capable managed container, not necessarily, but um, so like their new. Um, to get, uh, like for example, WebAssembly is becoming quite big on the edge. I know it's not directly related to the to the infer, but it, it could be. So with those new technology being introduced, which may replace container technology, I don't know. I don't know if it's going well, but it, let's say if it does, what they probably need a way to define the you know how those old and new technology is going to talk to each other, right? So is that an API? Uh, interoperability question. Um, I, I mean, I I definitely think that APIs can be part of a solution for integration of that. Um, the. And you, you brought up OpenStack. So when we say cloud native, my own personal view is you can take a lot of different technology and it could be designed. So that got into the infrastructure question that we were having earlier. Like, what do we mean when we say cloud native? And okay, you have cloud native workloads, but it's cloud computing infrastructure. So I... Um, the intent here was all layers are cloud native. So I'm going to go with that. So I've designed Zen's, Zen based systems that I would consider closer to cloud native or just using stuff like um, more dynamic and, and configurable Zen systems that weren't your traditional virtualization type of infrastructure. Okay, so that's just the first part. 
I think you can design the platforms of technology, but there can be technology that was specifically designed to run in that fashion. So Kubernetes was created based on those practices and principles, which means when you're building a Kubernetes-based system, it happens to, it's going to automatically have some of the um, attributes that you would want in a cloud-native system. But if if we look at how do you integrate real world, then you may say there's a there's a network that you want to integrate with that's running on a platform that's not cloud native, but you need to interact with it. Well, then I would think you're going to try to have a layer on the cloud native side to allow some type of integration that makes it maybe as um, neutral as possible. So there's some layer between the system that's designed to be cloud native and declarative with its APIs and all that sort of thing. And then maybe another system that's not designed for that. It's whatever it's designed for it's very much not designed to be dynamic if, if you look at rest as an api uh, a way for developing apis and the actual rest not what lots of people have, have developed it allows you to interrogate the api to find further apis so that you can literally dynamically with your program that's interacting it can see the next API that you need to call and it's directed. So your application can literally find new function calls, remote function calls via that. So, but you have to design your application that way and you have to design your API that way. So if, if your Kubernetes environment has a API for, you know, maybe integrating and expanding the network, but your other platform isn't designed that way well you're going to have to have some layer and there's a lot of ways to go about this so i'm really just saying my opinion on this you would put some layer between them so that you can continue to have your cloud native environment and ideally expand it while helping the other one and if you're using something i i don't want to just call out onap but if if you're whatever it is if you have some type of external orchestration management system whatever that is if it's not designed to try to work the way kubernetes workloads and i would say cloud native computing workloads uh, would do a lot of the distributed management and decision making based on the environmental changes that are distributed throughout the system but you want to use it well again you're going to pick you're going to have to create some type of layer and how is that going to work so you may have applications that are already running on kubernetes that are designed to utilize the kubernetes orchestrator and dynamically be updated there's a lot of new operators using like ai ml to read the metadata and and make changes well that's not going to be what's designed with an external orchestrator but if you want to use it, you're going to have to have some layer and then decide on maybe conflicts or whatever. But I'm getting into implementation on that. I think it can happen. And my opinion would be you try to put a layer between it so that you can keep as much of your workload environment following cloud native principles and have a layer between for translation. Is it who's on on that's on the Nefio side? Is, I think we got Victor, you're here. Yeah. So this made me think of the, the Nefio summit. Was anyone there at the Nefio conference a couple of months ago? Yes. Okay. Do you, you remember the one of the talks was about external, how do you interact with like external systems? Um, one of them would be, Oran and, and all this. Yeah, knowledge. but not just Oran, but like the what is the I'm 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 dropped it in my head right now, but the it's the protocol for communicating changes and stuff. 
it was one of the main topics that kept coming up. Con the configuration management changes that gets pushed out on a network. Oh, you mean netconf? Yeah, netconf. Net yeah, netconf. So one of the parts, it's not all of it, but there's <clears throat> one part of that that's very much not cloud native and it can't be made cloud native the way it's designed. So there was people working already on trying to provide like a layer between so that you could push both directions. So you'd be able to update on the net comp side, the systems that are using it that have pieces that just are not designed to be in this type of system. So then what you have to have is a layer that essentially translates and you're going to have to update both sides and you have to reconcile any issues. So I, th I think that's what you end up needing to do is having some type of reconciliation between the systems. If you want them to both work in the way they're designed to. So if, if you want the net, net comp side and those systems that are designed to do that to work fully and you just run them fully the way they are, and then you have another system that's fully, you know, NFIO, dynamic, cloud native, whatever, then you're going to have to have some layer in between that knows how to reconcile the differences. Hey, Vuk, thanks for joining. Um, I don't I don't know if, if you caught up, but it was the one of the first questions here was, this thing that uh, Philippe had responded to, I know that you gave a a update. Uh, this is on the pre-validation section, and it was the use of cloud native infrastructure. And I, one of the ask was, can we communicate? Like, what do we actually mean here? But it's the concept of is cloud native referring to workloads running in a cloud computing environment? And I was trying to communicate what my understanding that the desire is to have it on all layers. But um, I don't know if that was Nikolai earlier or who it was that responded. I know, Gerga, you had a few comments, but I think someone else started that. If if you're there, Vuk, I'd like for you to communicate like from your perspective as a CSP. So Ildiko was saying that this term was confusing. And we definitely didn't want container orchestration because we're not saying just you're running in a container. We're saying it's following these principles. But I don't know if there's another way of having this language to be more clear. Yeah, and usually stackers has that distinction. I mean, uh, from the stackers' point of view, um, Kubernetes is mostly defined as a container orchestration system. You know that, yeah, you can use uh, Kubert and you can manage. Uh, VMs and and also with uh, a special container uh, container runtime, you can also use you can also manage a, a um, Wasm application, but just in general, like uh, they try to um, specify Kubernetes as an orchestration system and an open stack mostly as a cloud computing platform. That's that's usually the the, the way to define things. So. I guess uh, illegal what she wants to uh, make that clear distinction. Uh, yeah, and again, like uh, I said before, like cloud com native for me is more the workload. Um, versus cloud computing is more related to the infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, uh, book, book speaking, hello, I joined later. 
Uh, they, they are different, uh, or they are two camps actually, and this uh, thing uh, uh, came up uh, uh, frequently. So you can even find the, the book from, uh, yeah, unfortunately, deceased Chris Nova uh, uh, and uh, other authors uh, called Cloud Native Infrastructure. And uh, uh, this book is actually explaining that this is an infrastructure that enables cloud native applications to uh, run with all these self principles and so on. So we also internally uh, refer to the uh, Kubernetes based infrastructure and uh, ecosystem around it uh, as a cloud native infrastructure or infrastructure for cloud navy, native. So uh, from this perspective, it is, uh, for me, implicit because it combines the orchestration and the dynamic nature of uh, of uh, infrastructure capabilities for application to be cloud native. And the cloud infrastructure is too general; it could be many things. Um, okay, I guess what maybe we can do uh, in order to move forward at this point, uh, we can specify a few things here and also try to reach uh, Illico and trying to find like a a middle point. Like, um, yeah, thanks, book for for putting maybe using that reference as a as a book that you reference from Chris Nova. Can you also try to clarify or like try to give better explanation? I th I think maybe just explicitly saying what you said, Vuk, would be good. So we expand what this term is and what it means to you to actually have that expanded definition. And um, I was thinking specifically cloud native, we don't need to define. That's frustrating to have to keep saying the same thing. But the, apparently the cloud native infrastructure and how that's meant isn't as clear. So if we can define that either in the, you know, the introduction or preamble or whatever, by the time it's said here, or you just expand that sentence just to communicate what it actually is, then that would probably address this issue. Yeah, I think we could even uh, borrow from uh, the, the definition that is already there or refer to the definition. Like we understand cloud native infrastructure as, and then dot, 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 dot. Yeah, let's do I that. share the link, uh, by the way, as a reference in the chat here. Is that to the document or the book? No, the, the book, which is one source yeah. of, of reference. They are, they are also number of articles and many things but this is i have to confess this is not uh, uh unison in the uh, broader community and i got uh, frequently uh, also such a feedback uh, when we use the term uh, or application could be cloud native uh, and, and not the infrastructure which is indeed at the end true but here we, we uh, refer to the infrastructure that enables it gives you all the properties so that you can run the, the cloud native application without external orchestrator with the reconciliation with the, all these these kind of things. But okay. I, I can try to, to make a uh, formulation to uh, remove ambiguity out of the document. It seems like we're saying a, a full stack, an entire stack, the infrastructure and workload everything including the how you deploy since we're advocating GitOps and stuff it's the entire stack so if that can be communicated um i, I think when we put a short word it it's not going to work because people aren't going to understand uh what that means i i get it and i th i thought this was what you meant but apparently it's not universally understood that way let's let's talk after and and try to add something in here i also think it'd be okay to 
if there's like a quote out of the book, we can just drop a line, put it in quotes, and and then ref add it to the reference at the bottom. It's okay to have like a single quote as long as we reference it. Yep. Yep. Agree. All right. Um. Well. So, okay, I'm going to resolve this one's Kubernetes. I, I'm going to try to work through the last of these that got, I think, addressed either with the last update or there, there's some spelling and stuff like that. Um, but we'll um, be merging this pretty soon. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, it's 10 minutes after the top of yep. the hour. Thanks, everyone. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Bye-bye. You have a good day.